And a happy finally Friday to you. The hype is over. The talk is over. The guessing is over. The Seahawks got help where they need it most with their first pick in the NFL draft last night on defense. Seattle used its 16th selection to pick Byron Murphy II to star defensive tackle from the University of Texas. Commissioner Roger Goodell made the announcement while John Schneider and Mike McDonald made the call. With the 16th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Byron Murphy, defensive tackle, Texas. Hey, is this Byron? Yes, sir. Byron, this is John Schneider with the Seattle Seahawks. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Good, man. Hey, we don't care what your agent says about you, man. We think you're a hell of a football player. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to select you right here, okay, buddy? Yes, sir. Okay, man. Come, be, come be a Seahawk, man. Hey, he, here's our head coach. Here's our, here's our head coach, Mike McDonald, okay? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, congratulations. Can't wait to see you, bud. I can't wait either, Carl. Can't wait to see you, too, Carl. Byron. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Congratulations, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give it over Byron, so man. Much. The place is going Thanks. crazy, brother. <laughs> The Seahawks were ranked 30th out of 32 NFL teams last year, allowing an average of 371 yards a game and 45 touchdowns. Murphy's expected to help greatly on that side of the ball. Seattle has two picks in tonight's third round of the draft as it continues in Detroit. Well, the Mariners used strong pitching and timely hitting to pull out a 4-3 win over Texas yesterday to take two of three games in that series. Ty France and Luis Urias each hit two run home runs to back up Lee Weiss make that Luis Castillo's efforts on the mound to help uh, Seattle win its third straight series. Ty goes the other way. It's a slicing drive. It's deep. It's deep. It's gone. Ty France with that great plate coverage. Muscles one out the opposite way. His first homer of the season and a 2-0 lead for the Mariners here in the first. Kept that baby fair. Didn't have any slice on. No. Put a good swing on it all the way. And there was Haney trying to go to the top of the zone again. Didn't quite get it there. And Ty makes him pay for it. He had an ERA just under five. The ball hit well. Out to right field. Hanniger is back. He looks up and is gone. Into the Rangers bullpen. Low strikes for his first home run of the year and gets the Rangers on the board early. No better feeling than to be able to answer back. As that Ranger offense is starting to wake up, Nathaniel Lowe just hammers his slider down and in. That one hit well, deep out to right and gone! Josh Smith with a solo shot to tie the game. That's his first of the year. That's what you've said, yeah. 18th Steve. Hey, look at this. Big drive, left field. Giddy up, baby! Gone! Home run for Luis Arias. Two run shot. The Mariners have a 4 2 lead. That's his second home run. RBI six and seven. Getting good play out of the third base platoon, folks. I might have had a shot. 2 2. And that one out to the alley in left field. And it gets down base hit. One run is in. They'll stop Heim at third. RBI single by Marcus Simeon and the Rangers pulled it within a run. Ground ball, Urias charging, throwing, got him! Manager Scott Service says he was happy to see Castillo work hard to improve his record at two and three on the season and get through six innings. I thought this is a really important series. Obviously, 
they won the World Series last year. We know them very well. They're in our division. We need to come out and, and play well in this series. Didn't know if we'd win it or not, but just thought how we played was really important to kind of establish, like, this is who we are. We have a little bit different team this year, and we are very hungry. I've talked about that in spring training, and we can talk about it all you want. you got to go out and show it, and I thought we did that in this series. When you're a top-end ro rotation starter in this league, that's how you become that guy. Uh, they were really grinding them. They took a lot of edge pitches, close pitches to get the pitch count up. Uh, I was concerned, you know, we maybe only get five, and he was able to get through the fifth really quick and then very efficient through the sixth as well. The value of that, it just allows you to set your bullpen up and go to your, your high leverage guys, and those guys were outstanding. So, uh, hats off to Rock, and he's rolling. You can see it. He's, he's got the, the momentum going a little bit. He's making pitches. He's living on the edges. A couple mistakes, you know, they were on him, the home runs today, but other than that, it was, it was really solid. So the fact we got through six with him really set our bullpen up uh, to get through this one today and, and, and get this series win. Again, that's three series in a row. We won. We're playing better baseball. And really relying on everybody. You know, huge home run by Arias today. Ty gets his first homer. You need everybody to chip in uh, until we get this offense totally clicking. So, again, really happy with how we're playing. Uh, we're doing it in different ways. But ultimately, we lean on that pitching, and they were awesome today. Seattle is back home tonight to host Arizona in the final of a three-game, or make that the first of a three-game weekend series. That's at 6.40 on Root Sports Northwest. Seattle returns home, leading the American League West by a half game over Texas. Angels were idle yesterday and sit in third place three games back. Oakland beat the Yankees 3-1 to one to remain three and a half ba uh, games back. Houston, meanwhile, was swept by the Cubs and six, six and a half games out of first place. Well, OMAC was able to sweep a non-league doubleheader in prep baseball yesterday as we checked the Les Schwab scoreboard. Pioneers took down Manson 6-5 and 12-5. Afraid as JV split a twin bill with Waterville Mansfield. Tigers winning the opener 11-1. The Shockers took the nightcap 7-6. Bridgeport no longer has a baseball team, so they forfeit to Okanagan yesterday. Oroville and Liberty Bell were postponed due to rain. Doubleheader scheduled today has Brewster at Lake Roosevelt. East Bond is hosting West Valley. Wenatchee's on the road at Moses Lake. Coming up tomorrow, Tomorrow, Liberty Bell hosts Tenasket in the first of two games at 10 a.m. Rest of the doubleheaders start at 11 with Prosser at Freda, Chelan hosting Cascade, Omax and Quincy. Riverside Christian plays at Moses Lake Christian. Cashmere won its CTL softball game against Omax yesterday, 14 zip. Okanagan beat Bridgeport 17 2. Liberty Bell topped Oroville 19 9. Busy schedule today has Brewster at Lake Roosevelt. Manson is hosting Bridgeport. Moses Lake plays at Wenatchee. Eastmont's on the road to West Valley. Cashmere is hosting Waterville Mansfield. Five doubleheaders dot the schedule tomorrow with Tenasket at Liberty Bell at 10 a.m. Chelan hosts Cascade at 11, while Cas uh, Quincy is at OMAC. Warden hosts Okanagan, and Manson travels to Bridgeport. The pitch was pretty busy in prep boys soccer yesterday as afraid of Blank Seal 1 0. Cashmere cut down Quincy 2 0. Cascade remained unbeaten with a 5 0 win over OMAC. It was Okanagan over Oroville 2 0. Brewster beat Manson 2 1. Bridgeport got by Pateras 2 1. And, to and uh, Tenasca topped Liberty Bell by a final of 4-3. to Two Big Nine soccer matches featured tonight as Moses Lake visits Davis at 5 while Eastmont plays at Sunnyside. That's tonight at 7 o'clock. Tomorrow at 11 a.m. matches find Pateras at Okanagan. Brewster's hosting Liberty Bell. Tenasca travels to Oroville. Cashmere hosts LaSalle at 1. Bridgeport plays at Manson tomorrow night at 6.30. Well, a busy weekend of racing begins tonight at Wenatchee Valley's Super Oval. The Spring Sizzler features the Jerry's Auto Supply Pro Late Models both tonight and tomorrow. Also racing will be the Knutson General Contracting Bandoleros, Angel Bail Bond Legends, and Northwest Focus Midgets. Gates open tonight. Well, they're open right now. The racing to get going at 6. Gates open tomorrow at 3.30. Racing at 5. Go to WVSO.com for tickets and more information. That's a look at Sports News. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday or for the parade tomorrow.